you mind real briefly? Um, just a real quick question. Good to see you, Mr. Bill McNary. Uh, also, I, my name is Ken Dunyon. <laughs> and, and, and this is the district that I happen to represent from 79th and Paxton all the way to the division in LaSalle. Mm -hmm. So, literally from the Gold Coast, Michigan Avenue, to the Soul Coast, <laughs> where you are right now. <laughs> How many of us know who our state representative is? Don't be, don't be shy. I'm not talking about you, Jay. <laughs> but I'll get paid to know. How many of you all have talked to your state representative? <laughs> You say something. Okay. It starts with the majority of these hands going up, and that being an automatic. There are a number of issues that were addressed also succinctly and very intelligently and common sense. We really know our community from A to Z. There are some other political realities down in Springfield that was also highlighted. Quite frankly, I would have never seen a Jacob Meister, as I now known for a number of years, his father. Uh, just good family stock. John, I've known since I've been down in Springfield. I know you were gay until a couple of years ago we were at, at a party. Well, this boy act like a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 anyway. um, trust me, I can go there and then some. After equal uh, sexual orientation was passed, back in 04, 05, 05, major chasm of communication with our white gay community. A few years ago, civil unions was passed. No communication after that as well. This session, last spring, this bill highly touted and perceived as a gay white man on the North Side piece of legislation. That's a fact. There are 20 of us, now 21 of us in the House, have a, a, good, a good portion of our six, us, our senior members. I chair appropriations for Harriet. Also chair uh, tourism and convention. I'm a senior. I'm number 13 out of 71 Democrats. Number 28 out of 118. Ten of us in the Senate. Had this bill passed, now I'm talking to you as a caucus chair. That's the hat that I'm wearing tonight. We wouldn't have had any dialogue further afterwards. Major disconnect with our white legislators, our white liberal legislators, who know what's best for us in our community most of the time. Some of the members who typically would move in, in a direction that is apropos for basic human protection and rights that most of us believe in, of course. But we never had a dialogue further after civil unions, but we just knew there was going to be some active communication instigation in a positive way in our respective communities. North side of, of uh, Madison Avenue. All right, we can shout over here. We need employment, issues of mental health, access to quality health care, schools. Never been a, a communication. So that was sort of a, a poetic blessing to come out of this. I would have never seen John probably over here hanging out you know, until 8.30 with Mike. He probably would. <laughs> what, what boyfriend he was trying to work. <laughs> I can say this to, to John. And Jake, you know I'll go there with you as well. Uh, and you got the top Windy City Times here. Um, Tracy, Tracy Bain. I got my blood kick for supporting the Gay Olympics. But they came here about six years ago. So my point simply is, it's going to take a little bit more because we're dealing with some issues internally in the House of Representatives with our white colleagues who always look at blacks as you're supposed to do this here. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, no questions asked. Certain legislators who introduce certain piece of, uh, uh, pieces of legislation is voted down because of who they are. When it comes to expungement issues, issues of <coughs> access to jobs and Contracts as a professional service person, not in construction with the unions. Null and void conversation. Conveniently ignore us African Americans. So there's some real issues that we're dealing with as a House caucus, as a Senate caucus, as a joint caucus. 